We're here at Narimba College with O10 head teacher David. What are we going to be discussing now? Jason, I'm going to demonstrate the two peg test. This is a simple process where we can determine if the level has an error in it. It may have been knocked or dropped and this process will allow us to determine what that error is and make any adjustments necessary. Well, let's do it. Okay. To carry out the two peg test, I've placed two pegs in the ground, 16 metres apart. First one in front of me, eight metres away, I'll call point A, and one eight metres behind me, which I'll refer to as point B. I've set up and levelled the automatic level over the point, equidistance, and in the middle of those two pegs. We're now going to take a level to point A and I'll ask Jason to move in and place the staff on the peg and I'm going to take a reading to it. Jason's just going to wave the staff a little bit for me. And the reading I have is 1.148. So I'm now going to record that in my field book and that is a back sight to point A. I'm just going to check that reading before Jason leaves the mark. 1.148. Okay, Jason, if you'd go down to point B now. Now I'm going to take a reading to point B and Jason's going to wave the staff a little bit for me. And my reading is 1.268. Stay there, Jason. I'll just check that. Okay, the lowest reading I'm getting, 1.268. So I now have a back sight to point A and a foresight to point B. Even if our instrument does have an error in it, the difference between those two readings will be the true difference in height between point A and point B. That is because I've set the instrument up equidistant, or in, if you like, in the middle of these two pegs, so the error in each direction is identical and when I subtract, that will cancel itself out. So I now know the true difference in height between point A and point B, and I'm now going to move the instrument to beyond Jason at point, point B, and take two more readings, which will determine if there is any error in the instrument. I've now moved the instrument from the point in the middle of the two pegs to a place just beyond point B. I'm probably about a metre and a half past the peg and Jason's going to hold the staff and just give me a little bit of wave. And I have a reading on the staff of 1.284, which I'm going to book as a back sight to point B. Okay, Jason's now going to move the staff down to point A and I'm going to take a reading over the 16, 17 metres. Now Jason's back on point A. I'm going to take a foresight reading uh, to finalise the readings for the two peg test. The reading is 1.165. I'll just check that reading. 1.165. Okay, this is the readings I took in the two peg test. First I had point A, then point B, and back to point A. So if I add the back sights, I get a total of 2.432. If I add the four sites, I get a total of 2.433. I subtract the four back sites from the four sites, and the difference is the error in the instrument, which in this case is 0.001 millimetres over 16 metres, which means the instrument's probably got an error of 2 millimetres over about 30-odd metres, 
which is the maximum we would normally take any readings. Two millimetres over 16 metres is quite acceptable in one of these instruments. So thanks for that Dave. Now that we've done the two peg test, what have you got for us next? Jason, I've got a short level run planned for you. Sounds great. <laughs>